This video is not for kids. This may contain cussing, suggestive themes, and or triggering topics. Anything said in this video is alleged and not to be taken seriously. This video nor channel does not promote or encourage illegal activities. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comments, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is as use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. And warning again, the following images and or content may be disturbing to some viewers. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. Hello all, welcome to The Truth Show. In this video, we'll be talking about the rumors of Kim Kardashian West and Meghan Markle and more. It's rumored that one of them may be running for president or who knows, let's talk. Here we go again. I mean, this is The Truth Show and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. Oh, and there's more. Oh, I'm not done yet. I mean, this is The Truth Show. Oh, yes. It has been noted, not yet proven, that Kim Kardashian had just a few months after that heat wrote a story about Kim Kardashian throwing her hat in the presidential ring. Kardashian had recently secured a pardon for Alice Johnson for Trump, and the magazine thought that this must mean she was looking to get into politics. This is what they said. She's ready to make the transition into someone who is genuine contender for either 2020 or 2024 an unnamed insider. As we all know, Kim has indeed been venturing into advocacy work, but Gossip Cop pointed out she also stated in an interview with CNN that running for president was not even on her mind, but maybe she changed her mind, who knows? Maybe she might do something in that field or something to do with politics. Meanwhile, there is someone else who may be entering in that world as well. It has been noted after the Duchess of Sussex and her, and her husband Prince Harry stepped back from royal duties and moved to Los Angeles. Woman's Day published an article about how Marco was totally going to run for president in 2024. It might seem a while away, but now is the time to prepare, the tabloid Shady Source said, which might explain why they have rushed into moving to Los Angeles. Of course, Gossip Cop, who I didn't even know had a personal relationship or was a person confident to the duke and duchess but anyway noted marco and prince harry only moved to the u.s in order to live a more private life free from the invasion of british tabloids press not to get into american politics that's what they said i slightly agree with that the outlet also said that marco would be seeking out the likes of oprah winfrey and george clooney for advice for running for president Despite the fact that, as we already know, Renfrey and Clooney have both confirmed they are not getting into politics, okay? So who knows? And I must admit, I think Mayan will make a good politician and maybe even president. I mean, from a business standpoint, if this is true, the royal family, I hope you are listening, you should probably get into bed with her. This could gain you a lot of power. Just saying. You might want to use this. But I'm sure this is obvious anyway. Megan is a humanitarian and so on. This is not something she wants to do. I mean, it's too much of a headache. Now that we got that out of the way, let's dig deeper and talk about how badly Megan was treated when she got pregnant. You all remember the video I did about Megan Markle suing the UK tabloids. Well, here's an update. She lost that suit, not surprising, and now it's going to trial. But as that happens more, information about her father got leaked now i know many of you hate when i say i told you but consider the amount of ridicule i received there's a need to say that sometimes but before i get into that let's talk about the fact that the uk didn't allow megan nor her friends to make any statements to defend megan or her friends you know for them to defend themselves and they were worried about her because this did mentally affect her. This is what it said. In the latest filings response to several questions from Associated, many concerned with the interview Megan's friends gave to People Magazine, which was published in February of 2019, in which one of the friends mentioned the existence of the letter. One section reads, the claimant had become the subject of a large number of false and damaging articles by the UK tabloid media specifically by the defendant, which caused tremendous emotional distress and damage to her mental health. As her friends had never seen her in this state before, they were rightly concerned for her welfare, specifically as she was pregnant, unprotected by the institution and prohibited from defending herself. Oh yes. Then it goes on to say this. 
The stance of no comment was taken by the KP communications team without any discussion with or approval by the claimant. As is standard practice for royal communications, had the claimant been asked or been given the opportunity to participate, she would have asked the KP communications team to say on record that she had not been involved with the People magazine article as she had not been. So, yeah. It was mandated by the KP communications team that all friends and family of the claimant should say no comment when approached by any media outlet despite misinformation being provided to UK tabloids about the claimant. This shared frustrations amongst the claimant's friends left everyone feeling silence as it appeared that other so-called sources were able to dis disseminate false statements about the claimant while the people who knew her best were told that they needed to remain silent. The claimant believes that that is probably because of this reason as well as concerns about the press intrusion by the UK tabloids that a few friends choose to participate and they did so anonymously. Then it explains how Megan didn't know that the letter to her dad will be published and we talked about that. You know, on how Thomas claimed he released part of the letter to defend himself. Right. Now, listen carefully. Because you will come to see how manipulative Thomas has been. Or, who knows. Because now I want to talk about is what I've been saying pertaining to Thomas Marco and his lies. I told all of you that Thomas was lying about everything and he was used as a pawn to ruin the credibility of Megan. It seems that the latest court documents also provide further specifics on the attempts Megan says she made to contact her father in the run up to the wedding, describing how friend a witness the claimants many calls to her father during the week of the wedding from Nottingham Cottage as well as from wedding rehearsals and pre-wedding events in Windsor and from Windsor Castle all of which were ignored or declined. This is what also was said. The documents also said that Megan took care to consider and to organize everything her father may need from all clothing items for each scheduled event to accommodations all transports and a dedicated assistance on the ground to be with him during his time in the uk oh yes a separate section reads when mr marco publicly announced that he fell ill the claimant sent the security team to take him to the hospital which he declined and subsequently to go to the hospital to drive him safely once he was discharged when he again declined as all her close friends and colleagues were already in transit to the UK for the wedding oh yes like I said then all that BS about him being barred etc was lies now I don't know if uh, Thomas Markle personally lied or someone lied for him and to him I say that because for a father to do this to his daughter on one of the most important days of her life is beyond cruel. However, now I'm worried of what all of these secrets and even is spilled would do to Megan. The royal family has a history of permanently shedding up people. Hence the late Princess Diana. Heck, the list goes on. With that said, the treatment of Kate Middleton was somewhat different. But before I get into that, we need to go back. <laughs> However, meanwhile, Kate and William are going at it. It has been reported that back in 2007, when the pair split for the first and last time, allegedly, Prince Williams was reported elated to be free from his relationship with Kate. William immediately went back to his old partying ways with his friends after the breakup. Oh, he didn't want to marry Kate. You, you all know that, right? He was pressured to. Heck, he was so happy to be free at that time. He joined France at... In London, and according to online news site Parade, was spotted jumping on a table shouting, I'm free, I'm free. I mean, they were only in their early 20s at the beginning of their courtship. But, you know, they still had a thing or two to learn about love. Or was it that they were never in love in the first place? Later on, after both attending St. Andrews University in Scotland, William went to serve in the military for a while and it meant being stationed a far distance apart from Kate. He thought, great! And we all know that William has always had a wandering eye. I mean, I caught him checking out Megan a few times. After a period of being apart, Kate felt as though they never got to really spend much time together. 
But their families were pressuring them to get married though. So what happened? The couple realized they couldn't live without each other and reunited just four months later. Well, that was what was reported by the PRs anyway. But remember, William was only 24 years old <laughs> and simply just wasn't ready to settle down. Oh, and his wandering eye and many affairs, it's been, you know, noted and proven and confirmed that that's something Kate had always known and accepted. It was part of the deal, if you, you know, want to go ahead and look that up. I mean, you all wonder why he was so upset at his brother, Prince Harry, his best friend, the one who kept Kate distracted. Oh, and guess what? William didn't want to have three kids. Did you all know that? He did not want to have three kids with Kate. He only wanted to have one, an heir, and that's it. But Kate kept pressuring him, and bam, she ended up pregnant again, and then again. And wanted another child, too, until he went to the queen, and she put her foot down and told her enough. It was told that from William and the public, he, you know, he's very careful with her and attentive and things of that nature because she's pregnant, and she likes that. You know, and the public is the same way, you know, and she likes that shit. But anyway, however, <laughs> with this COVID, they're forced to spend time with one another. And reports are saying it's been complete freaking hell, but they've been acting so long. Who can freaking tell if they're, you know, acting or not? Trust me, they're acting though. Well, that's it. Let me know your thoughts below on that note. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Hit that bell so you can get notifications when I do post more videos. Love you all. Bye.